I've always had an interest in alien scripts, something that looks unidentifiable, indecipherable. So uh, a long time ago now, I decided to make one of my own, and I'm making this video to show it off. I've actually made many in the past, but they never stuck around. So I decided that I want to just standardize one, and I use it for what I like to call the PCU, Pilot Cinematic Universe, which is something I'm crafting on my Instagram account kind of on this YouTube channel as well. I just use it as the sort of mystical, mysterious element in my storytelling. There's been many iterations of it. I'm sure it could potentially change in the future. To briefly describe what Femur is, I want to read an excerpt from a caption from one of my Instagram accounts, specifically my tattoo account. There is this one post where I describe what the art of tattooing means in the PCU. But there's this last paragraph that describes femur. Pre-split Yoiba discovered the non-native femur language and script when they adapted from visions that came from a world out in red space called Maomo, which means mutilated body in prime Basian. The script is used as a standard for most written languages, just like Latin is on earth, although the language associated with it is reserved for some formal speech and incantation performance only. If half of that seemed like it didn't make sense, I would suggest checking out my Instagram posts where if you read the captions, there is a narrative that I'm kind of telling uh, bit by bit. It will eventually come together. I will just kind of flat out explain a little bit more about what the terminology means. This video is essentially for anyone who wants to learn the script because I use it in some of my content. And you know, you can just like use it for your own purposes to write diary entries or just little short thoughts down, which is what I do. It's not actually hard to learn because it is just based on the phonetic alphabet that we are familiar with. At first glance, it might look like something Arabic. Uh, and in Arabic, I know that some letters, whether they are in the middle of a word at the end or at the start, they're actually written differently. But that's not the case with this because that would have just been too confusing and this re really isn't the focus of the story i'm trying to tell it's just kind of like an added thing and just for my own purposes i wanted it to be simple enough to remember and write down quickly like i don't want to actually be thinking about writing stuff down i just want to write it down quickly so on my wall here i've actually crafted a table which just shows all the letters how they connect with the other letters. There really is no bigger purpose for this. It really is just like, imagine this whole table was just like the letters A-M, A-N, A-T, A-S, A, just like written. That's really all, all it is. Like this could be like maybe this big and you would get the gist. But I wanted to like really show the whole scope of it just because I think it looks cool too. It just looks like some table you would see hung up on the classroom wall. But before I get into that, I think it's best to just show you how to write each letter. Now the femoral language does use characters that are present in the Lithuanian language. So I will be writing those as well, explaining them a little bit. Um, but in Lithuanian, we don't have letters like Q, W, and X. Although I did make variations for those letters so you can write an English text in the femur script. So let's start with the letter A, which would be this. It just looks like a U or, or an A without its top half. And then there would be the first Lithuanian letter, which is A, which is an A just with a long swish here. In Latin, this looks like this with, with a little hook. Then we have B which writes like a nine. And there is a specific way to write each letter. Like you don't write like that. You go like this and that. For C, it's just a simple squiggle. And then the next Lithuanian letter is a ch, which is an interesting way to write it, but I'll talk about it later. So it just looks like a big number three. That's how you write it, ch. D is very simple to remember as well. It just looks like a D. An E is like an E that's taking a little nap. 
then a Lithuanian letter A, which is similar to A, then we have A, A, and then we have F, G, H, then we have an I, which doesn't connect to that letter, although to show the connection we put a dot. Then the Lithuanian letter E, which is like that, and again to show the connection there's a dot there. Now this is E, uh, I mean I meant to say Y. This is the only letter that has like a space in it. Then we have J, K, L, M is sort of like a two, but with a little hook there. N, which looks like a little T. O, looks like a little B. P is another letter that just looks like the Latin letter P. Then we have R, which is just a three. The S is an interesting shape. It's like this hook with a hook. Then there's a Lithuanian letter again, which is sh, which is an S with the thing there. T, U, which um, looks like an L. Two Lithuanian letters, U and U. <laughs> v looks like a C. Z is like an S, but with a hook. And then the English letters Q, W, and X are actually just variations of the one of the few letters here. So W would be V, but going twice. Q is like a K, but with a hook again. And then X is a K, but with another line at the top. There are capital letters as well. So I'll just quickly write those down. W, and x and i can write something for example did i write that correctly <laughs> extremely okay i'm an idiot thrilling why did i make two mistakes there extremely thrilling there are supposed to be two l's and two l's there Extremely thrilling is what this video is. Um, I'm going to pretend like I wrote one L on purpose. Instead of just calling myself an idiot, um, I will make up a rule now. If you write English with this script, you cannot write double letters. And that is canon from now on because I made this embarrassing mistake. And it actually makes sense because aesthetically, double letters just don't look good. Uh, I can also write my own name, which is M. A, N, T, A, S. My surname looks a little crazier. It's V, E, Sh, Ch, E, O, L, E, S. I think this one looks very Arabic, like I mentioned. So I think it's t aesthetically it's pleasing to the eye. But I'm going to take this poster down and show you it in full. So I'm just gonna show you a portion of it, of like an example of how you would go to use it. So essentially what I did was I wrote down every letter next to every other letter, and it was a very tedious process, but in this way, I watered it down to just these basic letters, all sort of having the same connection types. So by connection types, I just mean the way the letters connect, but essentially here I established all the basic connection types, which are represented by these symbols here. And if you look at this agenda, you can see what colors mean what. So purple is like the start point where you start writing the letter. Green is the end point. So the basic connection types are illustrated here. They're all marked by this special symbol, which are written below the letters in each of these boxes to tell you exactly what type of connection this is, you know. A plus connection is two letters connecting by the middle point. This sort of connection is when a letter ends 
and it is connected to the middle point of the other letter. This sort of connection is when the start of the next letter is on the middle point of the first letter. The dot just means that the ending of the first letter is also the start of the next letter, so it's just a continuous line. The sort of circle without a fill means that the start of the first letter is also the start of the next letter. And then this dash is mainly just for the letter I, which is when we put a dot between the two letters to show that it is connected. We also have this little portion here with the S symbol, which means a special connection. And we actually saw a special connection when I was writing the letter CH next to the letter C. When you look here, for example, with the letter A, it kind of goes into the CH. The correct way to write the letter CH is from the top to the bottom. But when you write an A, it actually goes like from the bottom up to the top. And then you add this as a second stroke. Whereas if you write it next to the B, you write the B and then you write the CH like connecting its middle point to the middle point of B, making it a plus connection. Uh, for the letter M, there's two variations. So one where it starts like this and then goes into the other letter and then we add the hook or one where it goes from the other letter like that and then we go into the other letter like this and we end with the hook. I can show you an example of when that would be the case. So the word I'm going to write is ammo. But remember, since this is a double letter, we only write ammo. That would be an A that goes into an M like that. Then we do this little thing. We can write the O. I didn't need to lift my pen there. I was just thinking, and then we don't write the thing. So it would be like this. The alternative is also going like that. This one does take like lifting your pen a couple times. And this one is like just once. So the connection here where I didn't lift my pen is marked as that. And this connection is special, right? or even just this. So that's, uh, I mean, special. And if you look at the table for the letter M, this is actually the exact same like example where this is the special case and this is the one where it's continuous. The reason this block is colored because it does have two variations how to write it. And what you'll notice is that there's a trend. So the letters G and H all have two cases. E only has for some. For M, it's like almost the full column, but some only have one variation. There is a punctuation system as well. These are the Latin normal punctuation marks. And then below are the femur. So a dot is like a double dot. A comma is just a dot. The colon is like a dot, but on its side. The semicolon is like a dot with a comma. Uh, then if we want to write like a triple dot, you know, when it's like, and so on, it's actually this sort of formation. If we are opening quotes, it's the symbol similar to like the connection type, but it's not the connection type, it's a quotation mark. And when we're ending the quotation, it, we fill the circle in. This is a question mark, exclamation mark, parentheses, and a slash is just like straight though. The last thing I want to touch on before I round out this video is the number system. So it does have its own little nuances. Here at the top row, we see the numbers 0 to 9. 1 is just a dash. 2 is like two lines connected. 3 is flipped, but it's like three lines. Uh, 4, like the 3, turns into a circle. Then the 5 is like the middle point. So it's this whole circle with a cross. And then the 6 is kind of like a 4 repeating, but just vertical. vertical. And then the 7 is like a 3. The 8 is like a 2 but it's just the orientation's changed. And that could be a problem, which is addressed by putting a dot, which shows from which direction to read it from. So here we have the same symbol, the circle with the line, which when we put the dot here, we see it traditionally means four. But when it's written like this, but with the dot at the top, it means we have to read it from the dot into the symbol, which makes this a six actually. In this other example, we have, if you would read it normally, 
six five two three. Um, but then if you put the dot here, it will mean you read it from the back to the front. But that doesn't just mean it turns it to three two five six because of the nature of how the two and three are written. It actually turns into two three five six. Like this is a two, a three, a five, and six. So this also goes to show that all numbers are connected when you're writing them as like one number. Um, so for example, when you write 11, if you just were to write one continuous line, you couldn't tell that it's 11 or 111 or whatever. So to distinguish the ones, you add this little dash. The same goes like when you're writing 13, you're connecting, connecting the line to this little line in the three and you put the dash. For numbers like going into the five, there is a clear barrier here. Like we don't need to put the dash, but for the nine we do, because it goes into a line and it's not really clear. Like maybe it just looks like an overly long nine without the dash. Then there's number two, which doesn't connect to the other numbers. It just kind of hugs them. So two, two, 22. Um, we can see 21 is like the two with the one going out with the dash. Now this could technically not have the dash because this couldn't be mistaken for a three because that's why the, the three is designed to face the other way so that you could write 21 just like that without it being a three. But standard practice is to add the dash when it's kind of just like extending. I can write some more numbers just for example. So like 213, right? That would be a two, a one, and then a three, right? And then you need to distinguish the one. And then we can write like a random number like four, three, one, six, two, zero, nine, one, which would be like this, going into the three, the one, the six, and here you don't need the dash because there is clear uh, barriers here to separate it. Like it's not mistaken for any other number there. Six, uh, a two, which just goes, touches like that here in this part, uh, zero. It should actually like kind of hug it more. Looks a bit separate. Um, the nine and then the one with the dash there. So that's just a quick example. I don't want to go too in depth into the whole table really. Maybe just like this quick overview of how you would go to use it if you were confused how to write some letters together. So for example, let's say I didn't know how to connect the letters I and B. So what I would do is look for the first letter here, which is I, and then how it connects to B, right? So it would be this box here. And then looking at the symbol, I'd see that it's a plus connection, which means the middle point connects to the middle point. And what that would look like is this. So it would be the I and then the B. So the middle point of the I, right, it's just a point in the middle connecting to a point in the middle of the B, which is the plus. Uh, an another example could be like, how would W connect to L? And how you would see that there are actually two options to write it. And this is maybe the last thing I want to mention is when there are two options to write it, I did organize this table so that this far left side is the official official way to write it. So like how you would write into an official document. And then the second one is like a less formal way to write it. So you can see that like the E connecting to the L, you like both ends are preserved, right? But the more f informal way to write it would be just like kind of connecting it sort of lazily, you would say. The connection form, which keeps the whole sort of integrity of the both, both of the letters is the more formal option. And one that kind of distorts the letters is the informal. If you were writing the word owl for an official document, like a textbook, you would use this variation. If you're just writing it for yourself, you could use a special case. So that would look like an O, O, W. See, that was a special case. <laughs> I got a little confused. The special case for W 
is you go start it like a V, write the next letter, and then end it with the hook. I can also just use the plus, so connecting the middle points, which would look like this. So if I think if I just wrote it like that, and then like this, owl, when you're writing like the, you can't just really write it like this, because then here it doesn't really connect. You kind of have to make an effort to make sure the hook here is going out so you can connect the other letter more easily. You have to make a more conscious choice to leave that hook out for the other letter to connect. Some other little things, maybe like the letter P is a special case. How you were you would write maybe an S and a P. You see how it just goes continuously. Uh, and this is a special case because it seems like it would just be this connection where it goes continuous line, but it's about the way how the letters are supposed to be written. It technically goes into the P's middle point. Because when you write the P, you can imagine it like goes sort of over itself. And then when the A connects, it's actually connecting to a middle point. So it's not connecting to the start point. That connection wouldn't make sense because it's not... It can't connect to the start point because it's blocked off by its little swish here. So it, it would technically be this sort of connection, labeled like that, but there's no such variation. It actually is just a special case where you go like that, where the P becomes sort of this letter instead of this. There is something peculiar, uh, which I accidentally found just by looking at the table one day, where for the letter E and the letter I. Now this is ex an extremely minuscule detail, which is extremely irrelevant and will never ever be a case ever anywhere where you have to write E and E in one word together just for the sake, the sake of the peace of fucking mind. If you look at Y and E, so we see that it's this type of connection, right? Like here when I was writing it, I made sure like that I followed the table rules, but I actually accidentally realized there is a much more practical case, which would be a special case like this. So that's just like a very minuscule technicality. I'm sure there's more issues like that in this table probably, but the letter Y is interesting in that way because it could technically have like two variations everywhere as well. Like for example, how the F connects to the Y, F and then Y. This is the official way and the only way, even though technically it could have been this too, like F and then going from the start point like this, which would make it a, uh, this sort of connection, but instead it's, it's this. And my reasoning for that is because I just wanted the integrity of the letter Y like that, like connecting like this. I didn't want it to turn into this to kind of start at the top here and not turn into some sort of like weird one in the line there. Oh, uh, the, inter the interesting thing is I did make a rule. You can't write double letters, but if you did technically write CC, you wouldn't write the tail of the first C. It could turn into something like this when you're writing fast, which I don't like. So you should technically write it like this where you cut it off and then write C, C, C. Also the letter I, you don't always write the dot. That's the little nuance for the letter I, I forgot to mention. Like when you're writing it next to A, A, Kanarasishavirzu, you don't have to put the dot, right? You can see that it connects continuously and it's dotless. The only thing really missing is like for the capital letters, you don't have the connection types. Uh, I think that's just something you can infer from the existing table. Like for example, if you were writing the word will right so like will again no double l we're not doing double letters i'm sticking to that <laughs> this is ridiculous the v goes into the i which makes it like this connection then the l which makes it that and then you end it off like this actually so that would be an s special case. I guess it could technically like double letter would look like that, which looks fine. But I don't know. I just don't like like if it was ass, as, ass, hmm. as, it would just look 
you couldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to tell if it's ass or as should i just take the l can't believe i wrote extremely thrilling with one l you know what i'm gonna take the l for the fact that i wrote extremely thrilling with one l really i i can't believe ass made me rethink that ass i'm like damn as ass i was wrong it's like when you're writing a word really slow you're actually more prone to writing it wrong i remember in art school we were practicing calligraphy and in calligraphy you're kind of really taking taking care to write the letter perfectly and for some reason when i'm doing that i'm not really actually paying attention to the word i'm writing so i actually end up writing like crazy words well this was lithuanian like in, i was writing in lithuanian but i essentially tried to write the word pear pear like pear but in lithuanian so kraushi I was trying to write that, but because I was paying really hard attention to my calligraphy, I ended up like going like this, which is like, maybe I was thinking of a different word and then I just made an amalgamation of the two. Cause this would actually mean like, like a little testicle, like a, per like a little testicle person. That's what, that's what this word means. Like. I, I wanted to write pear, krauschy, I ended up writing kaushis, which means a little testicle person. That's how I would translate it, because it's not an actual word, but that's like what it sounds like, a, a little testicle. I need to end this video. <laughs> so here's this little story about a dude named Ferelius. Uh, if you look, there's actually a letter that's like unrecognizable. Also, the eyes are wrong here. This is just an older version of the script from much longer ago. When was this actually? Do I know? It would have been around 2021, maybe middle of 2021. Because uh, with the modern script, you would actually write it as Ferelius, like that, Ferelius. This is what the modern one would look like. This is what it used to be. This, I wrote just like a little backstory of how this guy came about and who is, who is he? Who is he? I'm not going to read all this now because it would be a little hard to transcribe, but I think he essentially was like part of an excursion, school excursion, but he got truck, he got stuck in a trunk. And he grew into the trunk and he became a monster. Hope you enjoyed watching. Not necessarily enjoyed. Maybe you fell asleep. And I will be heading to bed soon too. And I wish you sweet dreams and peaceful glee. Yeah. No, longful glee. Longful. What is peaceful glee? Longful glee.